at the Bedja headquarters today, uh, just doing some routine checks on my full suit. Um, obviously heading to Darwin uh, in a couple of weeks, which is one of the hottest rounds that we go to. So um, just cleaning out the lines, making sure there's no mold, making sure it's all clear, that can pump uh, the flow through well. Um, also replacing some of the fittings, these have the filters in it, which can get clogged pretty easily, so making sure they're all sweet. A um, couple of other points that we uh, keep on top of with heat is uh, we have a helmet fan. That's a big part. Um, pumps some cool air into the top of your head, which makes a big difference. We've got our drink bottle in the car as well. Um, we have a button on the steering wheel that electronically pumps water into your, into your helmet um, tube and then straight into your mouth. So that's pretty handy. Sometimes I run electrolyte tablets in that as well, um, depending on the hotter rounds. You know, you're trying to keep on top of hydration, make sure you can concentrate. Um, there's a lot of studies about when you're dehydrated, you lose a lot of function, um, you know, especially at peak, peak function. So um, we also have the foot fans that go into the car for this round mostly, um, and that makes a big difference. All the heat from the driveline, the engine, the exhaust, all comes up through the floor and can really heat up your feet. So that's an important one to make sure you don't lose feeling in your feet or, or get blisters, which we've seen in the past. So. Yeah, just making sure we're on top of it heading to Darwin. So um, I really like training in the heat. I love racing in the heat even. Um, always have. Don't love the cold, which it is in Albury at the moment. So it's been nice to have a bit of a break and get away from that. So, so this is an example of what the cool suit box looks like inside. So this tank has the water and then that pumps out through the bottom of the tube down here into there, which the vest will uh, plug into to there. So that's... Um, that's what the cool suit box. We also have a loop here that plugs into the helmet fan and then that pumps out of the back um, and then leads up to here and that's the part that plugs into the back of your helmet. So um, that keeps you nice and cool. Um, and then we have some airflow going to the front of the car as well. So uh, that's the office. Pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty tidy. Goes good. So uh, yeah, that's cool. But that's a bit of the prep work we go with the heating and cooling side of things for, for Darwin. Guys, we're going to continue on the heat training side of things. So this is a few tips that I've sort of learned uh, along the way. Um, some things that I definitely implement and some things that I you know, don't necessarily like or, or whatever. Um, I think one thing is electrolytes, being on top of electrolytes, whether it's in a tablet form. I don't always love taking these. They tend to give me stomach cramps, which is annoying, but um, I've had to find the right ones that work. Otherwise, I use lemon, salt, and sometimes add a bit of honey to that, and that kind of gives me a bit more of a natural version of um, electrolytes, which is what I'm after. Um, so that's just with the hotter races for me. Um, sometimes I run them in a drink bottle, like, a, like I mentioned. Um, as well as gels, some, some guys use gels, um, which is just pretty much sugar, bit of an electrolyte hit as well from that. Um, for pre-race, uh, some people use ice baths to pre-cool. I don't really like that. I find it kind of cools your insides a fair bit more than what it needs to, um, but that's definitely been a thing, or using those vests. Um, I think they're actually quite handy to have, but um, yeah, it sort of simulates what the cool suit does, I guess, outside the car. So you definitely can use those, which I'll show. Um, icy poles. I'm actually quite a big fan of icy poles. I find it's better to cool your core down by eating like ice cubes or icy poles, like hydrolyte pole, icy poles. Um, and if you check those out, you can have like 64 in a day maximum or something ridiculous like that. So that's a bit crazy bit then you get electrolytes in you get pre-cooling um, from the inside the the core of your of your body so that's always um, not a bad idea um, as for after race ice baths are definitely a good thing to have um, just especially if it's a Saturday to a Sunday like heading to Darwin Saturday to Sunday um, you know you got to back it up the next day you want to try and get back to physical peak as you can as quickly as you can so that'll be a thing that pretty much every team will use and we definitely have one in the truck that will be used at Darwin for sure. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of ice baths, cold showers anyway, even in winter. It's not fun, but it's um, got a lot of benefits. So that's always 
a, a good thing. Um, I think also one is, is I, I train a lot in summer in the heat, which I've always liked training in the heat, so I, I don't mind that. But I have learned how much I need to replenish electrolytes and, and kind of know your sweat really. Like um, I'm a bit of a, you know, you, you'll have a, a big session out in the sun, you'll sweat a lot and you'll have kind of like salt dry around your neck or, or the back of your head sort of thing um, if you're like riding in a helmet or whatever. And, um, so know that like you can be quite a, um, an electrolyte dominate sweater, um, so, which I am. So I sort of make sure that I take that into account and what I'm trying to do. And um, yeah, make sure I'm after the sessions replenishing that as well. Um, another big thing, which is actually really, I think, uh, an important one, would be weighing yourself before you get in the car, um, go kart, racing, whatever, whatever sport you're in. Um, sort of take note of how much water you drink in between your session, and then after the session, uh, be weighing yourself again and make sure that you're trying to. Not, don't wear your race suit and shoes and stuff, try and wear minimal stuff and then yeah, weigh yourself and, and try and get an account of you know, your, the body weight that you've lost and then you need to, to at least get to that point back with the fluids um, you know, just to get back to your baseline and it's probably even better to get heavier than what you started with um, so that you can still flush your, flush your system through with, with plenty of water to regenerate that. So um, I think that's a... That's a pretty vital one. So hope you guys got a few tips from uh, what I've shown you today. This is just some things that I do. I mean, there's plenty more things out there, but uh, yeah, just you know, experiment away from the races. Don't don't try anything new on race day. Um, I mean, I know what I'm going to do for Darwin and and what works for me. So I've definitely learned that over time. And and yeah, hopefully you guys can find some tips out of that. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Um, if you have any questions or a bit more personal questions about how you could better your uh, heat training or, or heat preparation, um, feel free to hit me up. Um, you know, I could help guide you in the right direction or, or whatever. Um, you know, I love a bit of training and my fitness and health, so it makes a big difference in the car. So uh, yeah, let me know. training boys it's on bring on Darwin <coughs> that burnt my tongue